Should you platinum the Uncharted trilogy? First of all, the answer is yes. This is a great trilogy of games and should be enjoyed by everyone, with the difficulty and time taken heavily dependent on your own skill level. I'll keep each story pretty much spoiler free, but just note that there will be a brief overview just for some context. So, in this video, I platinum the original trilogy back to back and here is just my final thoughts. If you've been living under a rock, Uncharted Drake's Fortune is the first entry in this series released in 2007 and my personal favourite of this trilogy. We are introduced to Nathan Drake, the long-standing series protagonist and descendant of the legendary explorer Sir Francis Drake, who is accompanied by Victor Sullivan, otherwise known as Sully, Nate's trusted mentor. The two of them discover the coughing of Francis Drake which hides a diary that hints at a lost treasure. Driven by his desire to discover what Sir Francis couldn't, Drake and Sully set out in search of El Dorado, the lost city of gold. With the help of reporter and future flame Elena Fisher, the game takes you on a crazy epic adventure through lost cities and thrilling gunfights in a race against time to find the city of gold before anything else. Now, this gameplay blends action adventure with lots of shootouts and gunplay platforming elements which can feel pretty clunky at times and also some mildly challenging puzzles if you're dumb like me. Now, this trophy list is an interesting one. On PSN profiles it says 5 out of 10 difficulty, but you could argue that depending on your experience with crushing, this could end up more like a 7 out of 10. The campaign can be unforgiving at times and the enemies hit very hard, so be patient and you will find your rhythm before you know it. Think old Call of Duty campaign on veteran and you're in the same ballpark. Completing the game in one playthrough on crushing will unlock you all of the difficulty trophies in one. So the aim here is to work through your story and look out for the treasures. There are 60 in total, 61 including the strange relic, and they're all easy enough to spot. You can also follow a guide if you want to avoid any extra backtracking later on. During this playthrough, you want to be aiming to get all of the kill type trophies done as much as possible, so every time you get a weapon related trophy, make sure to be switching for any of the other weapons, so that if you haven't got a trophy for it yet, then it's easy to get hooked on a weapon and not use the other so keep that in mind as you're playing. You can reload checkpoints in chapter 8, 16 and many others to do all of these. Don't worry too much if you miss any as you can just chapter select and revisit anything. Some of the other ones are a little bit trickier. Deal Fist Expert asks you to kill 10 enemies in a row with a single punch after weakening them with gunfire. The best place to do this type of trophy is on the boat right at the beginning. You can do what you need, save and reload the checkpoint and then continue again until you reach the required amount, making the rest of this a walk in the park. The only trophy I have to work towards at the end is 50 melee kills, and that's because on crushing, you almost never get close enough to get a chance. You can reload your checkpoint in chapter 3, or any really, as there's a bunch of good spots to grab this and reload until you reach 50. And for the last notable challenge, you have to speedrun chapter 5, 12 and 16. And whilst this might take a couple of tries, the time given is fair and easily achievable, especially after a crushing run. More than anything, this game just requires patience, as dying constantly can start to get frustrating, so don't forget to take a break. A few times I did this and came back and did what had me stuck. So, the story remains compelling throughout, and although I felt the end of all of these games is kinda weird, I feel like if you've played these you might understand, and there are also some frustrating moments with the gameplay, you've just gotta bear in mind that this is a remaster of a now 15 year old game. The narrative really excels in many aspects, with some top tier voice acting, great level design, and fun gameplay, Naughty Dog really made this series with a lot of love and care, which shows in the final result. The whole concept takes snippets of Indiana Jones and even Tomb Raider, and really modernised the genre, shaping a style of games to come, and even heavily inspiring the reboot series of Tomb Raider, which is also fantastic by the way. This game got a lot right for its time, and whilst it definitely feels like a PS3 game at times, it's pretty easy to overlook any small frame rate issues and bugs. Honestly, this one might be my favourite due to nostalgia, as this was the only one I even remembered 15 years later. This is a fair platinum for sure, and if you love those AAA games, you owe it to yourself to add this trilogy to your collection. You're looking at somewhere between 10 to 15 hours for this one, and that remains true for the entire trilogy. The main hindrance with playing this as a trilogy is the lack of variety when it comes to the trophy list. So instead of repeating myself, let's just go over what's new with Uncharted 2. Uncharted 1 is primarily set in tropical jungles and ancient ruins in South America, whereas Uncharted 2 takes place in various locations around the world, including Nepal, Borneo and Tibet. The environments in Uncharted 2 are more diverse and visually stunning. Now, Among Thieves received a significant graphical upgrade compared to its predecessor, featuring more detailed environments, improved character models, better lighting effects, and overall enhanced visual fidelity. The presentation of the story is also more cinematic, with more dramatic set pieces and breathtaking action sequences. Right from the start, the story is gripping and leaves you with a lot of questions, introducing Nate's old friend Harry and another series mainstay Chloe Fraser. For the story we are back as Nathan Drake, as he seeks the lost city of Shambhala and a powerful artifact known as the Chintamani Stone. 
This entry delves into deeper and more intricate storytelling. Compared to the first game, this plot is more ambitious and emotionally engaging, with a greater emphasis on character development and relationships. Questions of loyalty and the moral scope of his own adventures, Nate goes through a lot in this game, which sees him turn from boy to man in my eyes. It features heavy emphasis on the themes of sacrifice and the consequences of one's actions. The gameplay mechanics have been improved a lot, from the addition of stealth takedowns to the ability to use objects in the environment for weapons. The platforming and climbing mechanics are smoother and more fluid offering more dynamic and acrobatic movement. This one held up a lot better than the first, and overall this game is a lot of the same on a much larger scale with even higher stakes. So, if you enjoyed the first game already, you know exactly what you're getting into with this one. The trophies on each entry are in the exact same format. Now, the only real change to this entry is the addition of more treasures. For this game, you have to collect 101, and that's including the strange relic again. This is where I wish they tried something a little different. It would have been nice to have different styles to aim for, but it ended up being an awful lot of the same. Steel Fist Expert makes a return, and this time I reloaded Chapter 5 near the beginning and made use of reloading checkpoints again. Also, Master Ninja is back, and the best place to farm this one is on Chapter 12. Finally, there are three more speedruns again, and you know the drill at this point. It may take a couple of attempts, but it's very fair and achievable. On the original PS3 entries of 2 and 3, there are also multiplayer trophies, but those servers work no longer, and thankfully the PS4 collection has removed the multiplayer component which was terrible anyways. Uncharted 2 is primarily more of the same, with some nice polish coated on top. Another fantastic experience and probably the best actual game in the series. And whilst the trophies aren't hard, they can be repetitive if you're going through these back to back. So if I could do this one again, I would play it one at a time and take a break between the next to avoid some of the monotony. Drake's Deception is the final entry in this original trilogy. Delving into the backstory of Drake and exploring his relationship with his mentor, Victor Sullivan. The story revolves around Nate's search for the lost city of Arama the Pillar, also known as the Atlantis of the Sands. The game takes players on a wild journey across various locations, including France, Syria, Yemen, and the Rub al Khali Desert. The narrative delves deeper into the character development of Drake, revealing his past and testing his loyalty and determination. The story takes a more dark and gritty approach, exploring the past of Sully and Drake's younger days. The themes of betrayal, and a general sense of unease throughout. There are still some moments of humour, both Chloe and Elena make returns in this entry, and both run into each other making for a very awkward but funny confrontation. In terms of the gameplay, like previous entries, it stays pretty faithful to its roots, necessary quality of life improvements, refining the mechanics ever so slightly, but never deviating from what makes it tick. The traversal mechanics have been expanded, presenting players with even more challenging and acrobatic platforming sequences that keep the adrenaline pumping. The game also introduces new environmental puzzles that cleverly utilise the surroundings, enhancing the sense of exploration and discovery. The attention to detail is astonishing, with meticulously crafted character models, breathtakingly realistic environments, and awe-inspiring visual effects, this world feels immersive and alive, and its setting is my favourite of the three. Again, the same trophy list, so I'm not even going to bother wasting your time with this one, it's exactly the same as the previous two. However, if you do have any questions or need any help on any of these games, leave a comment and I'm sure I'll be able to point you in the right direction. In conclusion, Uncharted 3 stands as a testament to the evolution of the series. With its enthralling storyline, polished gameplay, breathtaking visuals, it represents a milestone in the action-adventure genre. So, after playing this trilogy, I can comfortably say it was more than worth it. Great adventure and pretty easy platinum trophies to boot. There's a reason Naughty Dog are praised so highly, and it stems from the love of their craft and desire to create the best possible experiences for us. The consumer. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you like this type of video. I'll be doing a full platinum video for the remaining Uncharted games in the future where I'll go a lot more in depth. So smash that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. Stay safe out there. Gaspard out.